Morning, Warwick. Morning, Patricia. Right. Okay. So today we're going to talk about clopidogrel and ticagrelor. Now, firstly, uh, Warwick, can you tell us about the difference between clopidogrel and ticagrelor? Well, ticagrelor is a more potent P2-12Y uh, inhibitor, Patricia, and it's mainly used in people after acute coronary syndrome. So most GPs don't actually prescribe it. It does require a chem number, and it is a restricted drug. What are the side effects of ticagrelor? Well, the main side effects of ticagrelor are excessive bleeding because it's more potent than uh, clopidogrel is often a lot more bleeding. And secondly, in about 20% of patients, they get this unusual breathlessness with it. It's sort of like an asthma type thing, and it, it can be quite disabling. Right. So at the moment, we use ticagrelor as the standard treatment after acute coronary syndrome, and clopidogrel often is uh, used in stable angina, elective PCIs, uh, and in some DHBs, clopidogrel is used in elderly population after acute coronary syndrome. Now, there's a new trial called TALUS uh, AMI trial, which is uh, in a, a trial comparing aspirin with ticagrelor versus de-escalation from ticagrelor to clopidogrel. Can you tell us about that one? Yeah, well, I guess the rationale behind this trial is that a lot of people have a heart attack, get put on this very powerful drug, ticagrelor, and uh, yes, it improves their um, outlook at 12 months, but it's at the expense of bleeding. And so the main risk after a heart attack is blocking your stent or having another event. It occurs within about the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. So what people have been thinking is, could they put people on the strong anticoagulant, that's ticagrelor, for the first 30 days, and then perhaps use a, a weaker one, such as t uh, clopidogrel, uh, for, for the remainder of that 12-month period. That's right. the rationale behind the trial. Okay, so basically we thought ticagrelor was slightly more superior than clopidogrel based on the PLATO trial yeah. published in 2009. However, this is at the expense of increased bleeding risk uh, because that trial only looked at cardiac events. Now this one, uh, I believe is a open label multi-center trial and can you tell us about the um, the design of the trial and the endpoints please? Yeah there's just a little bit more than two and a half thousand patients in this trial and they all had acute coronary syndrome so either a STEMI or a non-STEMI and they all got given the usual treatment which is aspirin and ticagrelor 90 milligrams twice daily at a month half of the patients were then randomized to receive um, clopidogrel and aspirin. And the other half just stayed on the usual t uh, treatment of ticagrelor and aspirin. And then they, we, they, they were then uh, followed for a year's uh, time. Yeah, and these are STEMI and non-STEMI patients, right? Yeah, yeah. and the end point of it, of course, was how many heart attacks, strokes people had, how many people were alive. But uh, the second and most important end point was how much bleeding the patients had and how much morbidity there was from bleeding. Right. So tell us about the results. Okay, so the results were that in the group that was given clopidogrel and aspirin, they actually did a little bit better because they had less bleeding. But there was no difference in the rate of strokes or heart attacks or deaths. Uh, so in fact, it was equivalent to ticagrelor in preventing those terrible things, but better than ticagrelor because there was less bleeding. So in other words, this trial helps us to find the fine balance point between the benefit of dual anterior platelet therapy and minimizing the bleeding risk. Yes, yes it does, but of course it's just one trial and we have to be careful the yes. trial hasn't been fully published yet. Secondly, you, when, with these trials you always have to look at what patients were included. And often the sickest and worst patients aren't put into trials, Just that's just the way the world yeah. works. And so this trial didn't have that many people with uh, severe triple vessel coronary disease and it didn't have so many people with left main stem stenosis. Right. And at the moment, I don't think any of the public hospitals in Auckland have changed hocus pocus to giving everyone ticagrelor uh, for a month then changing to clopidogrel. But what it does tell the general practitioner is if you have someone that comes out of hospital who's on all these drugs, et cetera, and you think that they're getting side effects from ticagrelor, it would be very reasonable to discuss this with the uh, uh, doctor, uh, registrar or specialist at the hospital and say, look, I really would like to change this person mm. to clopidogrel, and I think we'll have a pretty low threshold uh, for doing this now. And especially if they can't take 
um, to Kagrelaw because they've got um, uh, significant breathing difficulties. Right. I think that uh, clopidogrel is going to be a very good option for those patients. And for those who are obviously bleeding, it's okay to change over without a loading dose of clopidogrel. Yep, that's exactly right. For those people that have serious bleeding, that's a, a big problem. And um, you know, generally, um, the, mm, we're re realizing now that a lot of the bleeding in these patients is actually due to the aspirin. Or it's w when, they're, when they're on the combination, there has been a tendency to stop aspirin and just keep the person going on either clopidogrel or ticagrelor as monotherapy. And there are certainly some studies looking at monotherapy in patients who've had bleeding problems after heart attacks, and they look pretty favorable. Right, okay, that's very useful. I've learned something new as well. Thank you, Warwick. No problem, you're welcome, Patricia. Yeah.